Namaste Vidya, Amisha Krishnamurti. A very good morning to you all. Myself, JDM Dr. Ravi Chen, Assistant Professor, Department of Practice of Medicine in Faculty of Humanitarian Science, Jyoti Vidya Pee Women's University. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about vitamins. So what are vitamins? Organic compounds in food. These are basically the organic compounds that are not synthesized in the body but are required in very minute quantity for for so, metabolism of the body for all the metabolic activities in the body okay. so these are basically what these are the organic compounds. compounds and these organic compounds are these are not synthesized in the body okay. so these are not synthesized in the body hence these are required in which quantity Small very small quantity for carrying out the important metabolic activities of the body. Alright, so how to classify vitamins? Now we will learn how to classify the vitamins. While studying the vitamins, vitamins can be broadly classified into two groups. Two groups. Number one is transcendental vitamins. And the number second is water soluble. water soluble vitamins. We are going to discuss about both the vitamins one another. Okay? So first of all, we are going to discuss about fat soluble vitamins. What do you understand by fat soluble vitamins? They are stored in liver. Alright, and Vitamins dissolve. Uh, These are soluble, soluble in fat. fats and are insoluble in water. water. Very good. So, if you are taking these vitamins in excess quantity, these cannot be excreted from the water. Okay? Therefore, they will produce excess of these vitamins will produce problems like hypervitaminosis. Whereas the water soluble vitamins are not uh, they are soluble in water and excess of those vitamins will be excreted easily and hence will not produce the conditions like hypervitaminosis. Alright. Now what are the different types of fat soluble vitamins? Number one is vitamin E. Vitamin E. Next is vitamin, vitamin D. D. Third is vitamin, vitamin E. e. Fourth is vitamin, vitamin K. K. Alright, so these are the four fat soluble vitamins about which we are going to discuss today. Okay? Vitamin A, A vitamin B, B e, e, and, and K. Okay? A, B, E, K are the fat soluble vitamins. And what are the water soluble vitamins? Vitamin B and C. Vitamin B complex. B complex. Because vitamin B is not a single vitamin and this Combination. There are different types of vitamin B that are available, hence we call it vitamin B complex. And the next one is vitamin C. C. Go in. Yes. So then we only do water soluble vitamins and four fat soluble vitamins. So let's start with the fat soluble vitamins because these are soluble in fat and insoluble in water. And these are not produced by the human body itself, hence these are required as an artificial source or to the food material. So let's start with vitamin A. Okay. We are going to discuss these vitamins one by one. Vitamin A. What is the name of the vitamin A? Retinol. Retinol. What are the richest sources of vitamin A? Egg, chicken. Very good. And milk. milk. Very good. And green leaves. 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 You should remember that vitamin A is present in abundant quantity in yellow fruits, 
and vegetables. As we said, papaya, pumpkin, and carrot. Carrot is very really good. And what are the tomatoes? Non veg, sir. Non veg, very good. Non veg, very good. Fish. Fish, very really good. Uh, eggs. Eggs. Chicken, sir. Chicken. Are there any oils? Which are the source of vitamin A? Fish liver oil. Especially cod liver oil. This is a very rich source of vitamin A. And in the cases of deficiencies of vitamin A, especially in children, fish oils are usually taken. Okay. So this is very well. The sources are usually given fruits and vegetables and other sources that we have already told us. Alright. Now, what is the deficiency disorder if there is a deficiency of vitamin A? This is responsible for the vision. Yes, sir. Right? Color blindness. Color blindness, the normal vision of an individual. Vitamin A is a special. So, if vitamin A is lacking in the body, then what kind of diseases are observed? Number one is color blindness. Hmm? Color blindness. Here we have night blindness. Night blindness. Night blindness, that is the most common disorder. What is night blindness? The person is uh, unable to see in the night or in the dark. In the dark. Okay. There are two types of cells in the eye. One is rods and other is cones. So, uh, which of these cells are responsible for night vision? Rods. Okay. Cones are responsible for vision in the light and rods are responsible for the vision in the dark. So, here what happens is the, uh, there is lack of rhodopsin. Due to which the person is not able to see in the dark. So, number one condition is night blindness. The other deficiency disease is zero helium. Is it? Is there a disease of zero helium? Yes, sir. So, we have night blindness and we have zero helium. Alright, there are two deficiency diseases of vitamin A. Or we will look here. Only two diseases, night blindness and xerophilia, that are the diseases. Now, how to treat such disease? How will you treat such disease? If these diseases are present in children or in adults, then you have to supplement vitamin A in those individuals. Okay, so you have to supplement vitamin A for treating such diseases. And also you have to give various sources in which vitamin A is present, the various food sources have to be supplemented. Alright? Now, I have also talked about a condition called as hypervitaminosis because these are fats in the vitamin. If you take excess of vitamin A, then it will lead to the condition of hypervitaminosis. So, hypervitaminosis we will discuss all together, but for the time being, you just remember that there are various conditions like hypervitaminosis, which will be seen in A, D, E, and E. Alright, so all the so, is this clear? I didn't see it. Now, let's move to another vitamin. Other vitamin, fat soluble vitamin is vitamin B. D. What is the name of vitamin B? Calcium from? Calcium from. Or it is also known as 125 dihydroxy only calcium from. What is the function of vitamin D? It is essential for the metabolism of calcium and phosphorus in the body. Very good. And so, where the calcium and phosphorus metabolism is usually found? So, in bones. Very good. In bones. So, vitamin D is responsible for the normal development, the growth and development of bones in an individual. When a child is growing, at that time, vitamin D is required. Vitamin D is not synthesized in the body. But what are the sources of vitamin D? Which are sources of vitamin D? So most important is sunlight. Sunlight, very good. Sunlight is the richest and the most easily available, readily available source of vitamin D. I am not going into the pathophysiology of how vitamin D is uh, produced from sunlight. This we have already studied in the first year in your biochemistry, but the sunlight is very essential 
for the production of vitamin B and hence the proper growth and development of the bones. What are the other sources which sources of vitamin B? Number one is sunlight, next is milk. milk. That's why I said that you should drink milk, one glass of milk daily because milk is a good source for calcium and vitamin D metabolism. Okay. Other sources, which sources? Do you have any vegetables? Other sources of vitamin D? What are the other sources of vitamin D? So cheese, butter, Very good. fish oil. Cheese, butter, fish oils, all these, all the milk products. Right? Yes. Milk, cheese, oh, butter and oils, different types of oils are the rich source of vitamin D. Now, any other source? Okay. Now, what are the deficiency disorders that you see due to the deficiency of vitamin D? Now, vitamin D deficiency disorders, number one? Rickets. Rickets. Rickets in children. children. How can you recognize that the children is having rickets? Posture of the legs. There will be the chest of the patient will be pigeon shaped chest. So, pigeon shaped chest is a well defined. In rickets, the bones will be soft and hence they, uh, they will not grow up properly and they will be curvature in the bones. What are the other diseases due to vitamin D deficiency? Osteomalacia. Osteomalacia in adults. Okay. Rickets was seen in children and osteomalacia in adults. Where okay. the bones becomes weak. Weak and okay. And fragile and are prone to fractures. Okay. So these are the two important diseases for the air. Hyperbetaminosis. Hyperbetaminosis that I have told you. In all the four, A, D, E, K, we are going to discuss about hyperbetaminosis in the next stage. Alright. So, this was the deficiency disease due to vitamin D, rickets in children and osteomalacia and adults. Now, when there will be deficiency of vitamin D, you will give the supplements, either food supplements, dietary supplements, or medicinal supplements to the patient because the vitamin D deficiency is very common these days. You will find a lot of patients with vitamin D deficiency because of the lifestyle you don't go out in the sunlight and hence vitamin D deficiency is very common these days. Alright, so you have to give the supplements that are easily available and also the dietary advice has to be given to the patient with vitamin D deficiency. The third one is vitamin K. E. E. Yes. What is the name of vitamin E? Alpha tocopherol. Tocopherol. Alright. So vitamin E is tocopherol. What is the normal functioning of vitamin E? What is the function of vitamin E? Vitamin E is an antioxidant. You might have heard about vitamin E. Alright. Do you know the resources of vitamin E? So green leaves and green leafy vegetables, very good. Green leafy vegetables you can always like. Green leafy vegetables are the right sources for each and every vitamin. So what happens if there is the deficiency of vitamin E? Sunflower oil is also a very good uh, source of vitamin E. What are the other sources for vitamin E deficiency? Uh, so sources for vitamin E. Other sources of uh, whole grain cereals, nuts and whole grain seeds. Nuts are there and Vegetable oils. vegetables are there. Nuts like nuts, what are nuts? Almonds. Almonds, cashew and very walnut. Walnut. So these are the big sources for vitamin E that provides the capacity of antioxidants. What are the deficiency disorders that are seen due to vitamin E? Intestinal malabsorption. Very good. Vitamin E, due to the deficiency of vitamin E, there is intestinal malabsorption of the important constituents of the food. And due to which, what kind of diseases are seen? Posterior column or degeneration, reflexia, gaze paresis. Very good. So there are various things like paresis. Paresis means abnormal sensations on the skin is seen. A reflexia is there, the patient is not able to reflect or uh, respond to the particular stimuli. So these kind of things are commonly seen. Alright. 
vitamin E is also given in place of helicol, most commonly helicol, because it provides, it helps in the intestinal absorption of important constituents which are usually not absorbed. Alright, is there any other function of vitamin E? Any deficiency disease? So it produces hemolytic anemia and retrolental fibroplasia. Very good. So hemolytic anemia and the other anemias are responsible directly due to the non-absorption or malabsorption of important nutrients. So this is basically a small vitamin. Next we come to now to overcome the deficiency, uh, we see that directly vitamin E capsules are available, and apart from these green leafy vegetables, the nuts. And these are very good uh, sources for vitamin E that has to be taken by the patient for uh, removing the deficiencies. The fourth one of the fats in the vitamin E is vitamin K. K. K is known as what is the name of K? What is the name of vitamin K? This is your homework. Alright, if you don't remember the name of the K, then you have to go and see for uh, the vitamin K. I will, uh, well, I will explain about this uh, vitamin and you can easily know about the name. This is basically a vitamin that is responsible for blood, blood clotting. Blood, blood clotting. Okay, so vitamin K is responsible. This is an IV clotting factor. Alright, uh, this is responsible for the clotting of the blood. So, what are the rich sources for vitamin K? So common is um, green vegetables, green vegetables and uh, are fruits, fruits What are the other sources we done? So green leafy vegetables are the other sources. You have non-vegetarian food non that is also a good source for vitamin K. Uh, what are the deficiency disorders due to the deficiency of vitamin K? We will have different type of bleeding disorders. So hemorrhage. Hemorrhage, there will be easy hemorrhage, there will be bruising from the, from the skin. Easy hemorrhage will be seen and obstructive jaundice. Obstructive jaundice will be there and, and anticoagulant therapy. Very good. So vitamin K, what does is it is basically responsible for the clotting of the blood. If there is lack of vitamin K, then the blood will not clot properly and hence there will be different type of bleeding disorders. So you have to give or supplement vitamin K for the clotting of the blood and this is responsible basically for different type of hemolytic anemia. Okay. So we have to supplement vitamin K if there is uh, hemolytic disease in the individuals. So this was all about uh, fat soluble vitamins. Now we are going to discuss about water soluble vitamins. There are two water soluble vitamins. First of all we will be discussing about vitamin C. What is the meaning of vitamin C? It is ascorbic acid. Name you know? Yes, sir. Ascor ascorbic acid. So vitamin C is a great antioxidant again. And what is the function of vitamin C? Ajitala, first of all, tell me the red sources of vitamin C. This is very common. The red sources are all citrus fruits, citrus juices. Fruit. These are very good sources for vitamin C. Since this is a water soluble vitamin, hence you will never get hypervitaminosis in this particular vitamin. Okay. Next, what are the red sources? We have discussed what is the function of vitamin C? It promotes collagen formation. Collagen formation, very good. And? Uh, and enhance the iron absorption from the intestine. Very good. So iron absorption is enhanced and collagen formation is yes, uh, there. And what else? Uh, and so it is uh, help in synthesis of bile acids from cholesterol. Right. So these are the important functions of vitamin C. That is uh, enhancing the bile action. Right. And it is, uh, what are the deficiency disorders? Actually, uh, the thing that is asked in your exam is the deficiency disorder due to vitamin C. So the most important deficiency disorder that happens with vitamin C is scurvy. What is scurvy? Painful swelling over the long Swelling on the gums. Alright, so vitamin D deficiency leads to the development of scurvy. 
that is most common disease and in this study the most common uh, treatment that is given is to take all the citrus fruit juice to take lime in order to get more and more vitamin C vitamin C is also helpful in raising your immunity and preventing different types of diseases like uh, in this pandemic of uh, COVID-19 vitamin C is given as a supplement to the patients so that they can get treated okay. so this is about vitamin C now we will discuss about vitamin B in detail okay. let's start with vitamin B uh, vitamin B uh, consists of different types okay. so different types of vitamin B let me first draw uh, write about the vitamins on the board then we will discuss about it alright okay. alright so we have until now we have discussed about uh, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E and vitamin K and we have also discussed about vitamin C alright now we come to vitamin B complex there are different vitamins in vitamin B complex we have vitamin B1 B2, B3, B6, B9 and B12 alright there are different type of vitamins that we are going to discuss we will be discussing about B1 B2, B3, B6, B9 and B12 these are the major vitamins uh, vitamin B that we are going to discuss in today's class alright so at present I have made uh, written about two vitamins first of all let us discuss about these two things alright vitamin first of all vitamin B1 vitamin B1 is also known as thymine alright thymine thymine is responsible what is the function of vitamin B1 this is an important coenzyme and for the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle, what is the function of Krebs cycle? To synthesize glucose. Very good. Alright. Krebs cycle synthesizes glucose. So it is responsible for the glucose metabolism. If the Krebs cycle is not functioning properly, then the glucose will not be produced properly and hence it will not be supplied to the brain and other parts of the body. And as we all know, glucose is very essential for the energy, purpose. energy production but, and if there is no glucose in the brain then we will get different types of diseases and different types of problems so I mean this basically acts as a coenzyme in the Krebs cycle and deficiency of vitamin B1 is responsible for development of different types of diseases alright daily requirement for thymine is 1 to 2 mg thymine per day what are the red sources for thymine? Whole grain. Whole grain. It is the thymine is present in the outer covering, outer coat of what? Wheat, rice, and millet pulses. Millet pulses. So, if we are taking polished uh, food items, then vitamin B1 will be deficient in those individuals who are taking polished food. Alright? Because it is present in the outer covering. Hence, we should not take polished food and pulses and should take the whole grain foods. Now the deficiency can be due. Deficiency of vitamin B1 can be due to a number of factors. Number one, the factor absorption. If the patient is taking ample of these products but still it is not getting absorbed, then it is due to the defective absorption. It is seen especially in case of alcoholism. If the patient is taking alcohol, then the absorption will be slow. Or it can be due to the excessive loss. Like a person is taking a good quantity of vitamin B1, but it is getting lost through the intestine. It is seen especially in cases of diarrhea. And the third condition is when there is increased demand for thymine. This occurs under two major conditions. Number one is pregnancy. And the second one is when there is growth. When there is growth in children. At that time also the demand for vitamin B1 is increased and if the demand is not fulfilled then we get the disease as a result. What are the various diseases that occurs due to the deficiency of vitamin B1? And due to the deficiency of vitamin B1 we get beriberi as a result. Beriberi can give two types, dry beriberi and wet beriberi. The other condition includes cardiac manifestation. There are various cardiac manifestations that will be seen due to vitamin B1 deficiency. It improves high output state due to peripheral visualization. There is edema, edema of the body due to the retention of salt and water. There can be bioventricular failure because of the overloading of the heart. Alright. The other neurological manifestations, there are certain neurological manifestations which are seen due to the deficiency of vitamin B1 or thymine. So, there 
means that basically we have uh, neurological manifestations due to the deficiency of vitamin B. Now, how to do the management? How to treat such deficiency? For the treatment of uh, vitamin B1 deficiency, it has to be supplemented from the outside. And for the supplementation, we require timing supplementation. It can be done intramuscularly, intravenously, or oral tablets can be given. After the administration of vitamin B1, there will be a rapid and mild improvement in the symptoms of the patient and the cardiac manifestations will reduce promptly. So this was all about vitamin B1 or the thymine. Now we come to the second vitamin that is vitamin B2. Vitamin B2 is also known as riboflavin. Alright. So what is the function of vitamin B2? B2 is a coenzyme in the oxidation reduction cycle. So we have vitamin B1 that was a coenzyme in the lab cycle and B2 uh, is responsible as a coenzyme in the oxidation reduction process. What is the daily requirement for vitamin B2? Uh, vitamin B2? It is required in a very small quantity, 1 to 2 milligram per day. Now again, the there is sources. The sources of vitamin B2, uh, B2 is milk, cheese, cheese and non-veg whole cereal, liver, kidney, legumes and green leafy vegetables. So it is most commonly found in the legumes. Now, what are the causes? If a person is taking ample quantity of these things, so what are the various causes that can lead to the deficiency of vitamin B2? It can be due to malnutrition. If the patient is not at all taking the food items, then it can lead to the development of vitamin B2 deficiency. Malabsorption from the intestine, if the patient is taking food items and they are not getting absorbed in malabsorption, or the dialysis, if the patient is having some kidney disorder, and there is dialysis that can lead to the uh, development of vitamin B2 deficiency. Now, what are the clinical features of vitamin B2 deficiency? Whenever a patient of vitamin B2 deficiency is coming to us, the patient can present with SOTO. There can be SOTO, glossitis. Glossitis can be seen. There can be angular stomatitis. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be fine cracks at the corners of the mouth. That is, uh, angular stomatitis, there will be geosis. Seboric dermatitis. Vitamin B2 is responsible for the development of seboric dermatitis and supplementary vitamin B2 gives a wonderful result in such cases. You can find normocytic, normocytic, normocytic anemia due to the deficiency of vitamin B2. Now, how to treat such cases? For the treatment of such cases, we will require the supplementation of vitamin B2. That is done by vitamin tablets, 5 milligrams per day to be given. Now let's start with the vitamin B3. Alright. So we have discussed about vitamin B1 and vitamin B2. Now we come to vitamin B3. Vitamin B3 is also known as? Niacin. Niacin. Niacin is vitamin B3. And how it is synthesized? Uh, vitamin B3 is synthesized from the essential amino acid tryptophan. Alright. The daily requirement for vitamin B3 is 15 to 20 mg per day. Right? If uh, intake is less than that, then we will see the deficiency disorders due to vitamin B3. Now, red sources for vitamin B3 are the cereals and pulses, nuts, meat, fish, kidney, yeast, and coffee. coffee. So, these are the red sources for vitamin B3. Now, what causes the deficiency of vitamin B3? B3, uh, B3 in our body. Vitamin B3 deficiency is caused due to chronic small intestinal disorders. If a patient is having a small intestinal disorder, chronic small intestinal disorder, then it can lead to the development of vitamin B3 deficiency. It can be due to the excessive intake of alcohol. So, alcoholism, if you are taking a lot of alcohol, then it can produce uh, the deficiency of vitamin B3. Uh, various food habits can also lead to the development of vitamin B3 deficiencies like high intake of the millets. If you are taking high intake of millets, only millet you are taking, then it can also develop vitamin B3 deficiencies. Now the deficiency disorders. The deficiency disorders will be vitamin B3 deficiency. The most common disorder is the pelagra. Pelagra is represented by three means. One is dermatitis, diarrhea and dementia. So these are the important characteristic features 
uh, in those individuals who are taking ex exclusive millet diet. This is causing uh, deficiency of vitamin D3 and the disease is known as diarrhea. That is characterized by three things. Number one is diarrhea, dementia, and diabetes. Alright, three things are there. Now, how to manage such case? For the management of such case, you have to supplement vitamin B3. Now, the supplement is done by nicotinamide 100 mg per day has to be given. So, this was about vitamin B3. Now, we come to vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 is also known as pyridoxin. Okay, pyridoxin. Now, what is the function of pyridoxin? It acts as a synthesis of the heme precursor for the production of RNCs. Okay, so it acts as a heme precursor and synthesis of GABA in the brain. So, this acts as two important functions. Now, the function is neural, uh, it is a neurological inhibitors and acts wonderfully in of convulsive disease. So those patients who are getting regular convulsions are benefited by the administration of vitamin B6 or the pyridoxin. The daily requirement of pyridoxin is 1 to 2 mg of pyridoxin per day. The sources, important sources are whole grain cereals, yeast, vegetables and milk and milk. So these are the important sources for vitamin B6 or the pyridoxin. The deficiency of vitamin B6 is very rare because the quantity required is very small and it is easily absorbed by the body. The clinical features for vitamin B6 deficiency includes glossitis, ankylous stomatitis, chilosis, and different kinds of neuropathies. So the clinical features consist of glossitis, ankylous stomatitis, chilosis, and neuropathies. Now how to manage the deficiency of vitamin B6? The deficiency can be managed by supplementing vitamin B6 or the pyridoxin. So pyridoxin supplementation of 100 mg per day is required. Now we come to the vitamin, next vitamin, vitamin B7 that is also known as biotin. Alright. Now biotin is a cofactor in the carboxylase. Alright. So it acts as a cofactor in carboxylase process enzyme. The daily requirement of biotin is 50 to 100 mg per day. The cause for deficiency is prolonged consumption of raw egg bite. If a patient is taking raw egg bite for a long time, then it can lead to the development of deficiency of vitamin B7 or the parenteral or prolonged parenteral nutrition. Parenteral nutrition is basically that nutrition that is not taken by mouth. Alright, so if a patient is on bed rest or with such a disorder that he or she is taking too much parenteral nutrition and it can lead to the development of vitamin B7. The clinical features include peri-gold dermatitis, conjunctivitis, and different types of dermatitis. So there will be peri-orthopathical uh, dermatitis, there will be dermatitis delay and conjunctivitis. Now how to manage the uh, case of vitamin B7 deficiency? We have to give a supplementation of vitamin 100 mg per day for the duration of deficiency. So this was about uh, deficiency of vitamin B3. B6 and B7. Now we come to uh, deficiency of vitamin B9 and B2. Alright, so now let's we'll start with uh, vitamin B9 and B2. Till now we have discussed about vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. And uh, in the uh, water soluble vitamins, we have discussed about vitamin C. And in vitamin D, we have discussed about vitamin B1, B2, B3, B6. And now we come to the vitamin B9 and vitamin B12. So, vitamin B9 is also known as folic acid. Alright. The red sources of vitamin B9 are green, dark green leafy vegetables. Uh, we have beans, we have peanuts, sunflower, whole grains, liver, and eggs. These are the red sources for vitamin B9. That is also known as folic acid. Folic acid deficiency is most common during pregnancy in females and that's why folic acid tablets are given routinely in the pregnant females. The daily requirement of vitamin B9 or folic acid is 1 to 2 mg but this requirement increases in pregnancy up to 5 mg per day. The deficiency of vitamin B9 or the folic acid occurs due to number 1 deficiency disease that is, if you are not taking vitamin uh, B9 regularly or 
the four materials that is which is vitamin B9 or the folic acid that can lead to the deficiency of vitamin B9. It is also due to uh, the physiological demand. When the physiological demand increases, like in uh, uh, during pregnancy and after the intestinal surgery, also uh, there is deficiency of vitamin B9 because after the intestinal surgery, uh, the body is not able to absorb the iron or the folic acid from the intestine. The treatment of folic acid deficiency is uh, supplementation. Uh, the supplementation of the food material that is rich in vitamin B9 or uh, the medicinal intake of folic acid in the form of tablet of folic acid directly. So this is about vitamin B9 or the folic acid. Now we come to vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is also known as cyanobalamin. Many times the deficiency of B9 and B12 is seen together in lot of patients. Alright. Although, although vitamin B12, the rich sources are from animal origin and in vegetarian sources only milk contain vitamin B12. Hence, uh, the, uh, you will see lot of people with vitamin B12 deficiencies these days. So, let us discuss about vitamin B12 or cyanobalamin. The sources of vitamin B12 are the products from milk, milk products, poultry products and also non-vegetarian like the fish, the chicken, all these are the sources for vitamin B12. The disease, the most common diseases that are commonly seen in case of vitamin B12 disorders consist of regular anemia and various kind of neurological defects. There are peripheral neuropathies which are seen with the patients with uh, vitamin B12 deficiencies. There, are, there is degeneration of the spinal cord and there are various cerebral manifestations which are uh, related to the brain and dementia that is loss of memory. These are seen due to the demyelination of the nerve fibers due to deficiency of vitamin B12. The clinical features of vitamin B12 includes there is weakness, there is tiredness, fatigue. The patient with uh, deficiency of folic acid as well as uh, B12 presents almost similar features like weakness, tiredness, fatigue, lightheadedness is there. There are palpitations in heart. The patient will feel palpitations and there is shortness of breath on slightest exertion. Okay, even on sitting there is shortness of breath. Uh, the patient will have different kind of nerve problems. There is tingling and pasting of the muscles and there is also vision loss. There are different type of mental problems. There is loss of memory in the patient that has dementia like symptoms and there are various behavioral changes that are seen with the patient of deficiency of vitamin B12 or cyanobalamin. The treatment for vitamin B12 is the supplementation with the, or the injections of vitamin B12 that are usually uh, given to the patients with vitamin B12 deficiency. So this completes our chapter of vitamins. We have discussed about what are vitamins. Vitamins are basically the organic compounds which are not synthesized in the body and have to be substituted from the outside in order to perform certain activities in the body and for uh, carrying out the metabolic activities. The deficiency of these vitamins produces lot of diseases. Although we have not discussed about hyperbetamnosis that I have told you that we will be discussing in, in another lecture, especially hyperbetamnosis, what are the signs and symptoms of hyperbetamnosis of taking excess of vitamins. So that we are going to discuss, but we have discussed about vitamin and the pharmaceutical vitamins that is vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin E and vitamin K. We have also discussed about vitamin C and vitamin B complex. So this completes with the section of vitamins that is commonly asked in the examination. So this was all for today.